This ain't your ordinary football show. It's the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Brought to you by Priority Automotive. Fourth ranked Old Dominion's first conference game of the season against New Hampshire on a hot Saturday afternoon looked as if it would end in disaster. But down 23 points in the third quarter, Monarchs quarterback Taylor Heineke took his team on a magical, mystical tour that will be remembered by ODU fans forever. Heineke put on the best passing display in college football history as he rallied Old Dominion back to a 64-61 win. And tonight, we relive the most exciting game in the team's history, the Old Dominion Football Show. Starts now. Hi, Bruce Rader, along with head coach Bobby Wilder, and what a week it's been. Taylor Heineke throws mm -hmm. seven touchdown passes against Campbell and right. then comes back the very next week to earn himself a place in college football history. Coach, it's almost as if words can't describe what happened Saturday. No, it, it's still so surreal, Bruce, to think what happened when, when you look at that football game and think, as you just mentioned, we're down 23 in the third quarter, and we almost needed a miracle. We needed that game to change quickly, and it did based on what Taylor did and also on what our defense did in the fourth quarter. Hey, Coach, we're not talking about beating Campbell. We're talking about doing this against a mm -hmm. nationally ranked New Hampshire team right. with the best linebacker in the league, maybe one of the best in the country, right. and the toughest FCS league in mm -hmm. all of college football. Yeah, when you think about it, Bruce, I mean, Taylor throws for 730 yards in this game. 480 of those passing yards came after halftime. He had a pedestrian like 250 yards in the first half. And what's really incredible about this, Bruce, is this wasn't just Taylor piling up numbers. We were chasing points this entire game. We were down 16 to three. We were down 30 to 10. We were down 47 to 23. So every pass he threw was critical. And I did something I almost never do. There were nine minutes to go in the third quarter. We're on our own 43-yard line. I go for it on fourth and three, which is an obvious punt situation. He had to convert that. He had another fourth down on our own end of the field early in the fourth quarter. He had to convert. So our offense had all these conversions they had to get, and then our defense had to stop them in the fourth quarter. And your defense really wasn't doing you a lot of favors. But then in the third quarter, mm -hmm. Taylor goes over to the defense showing mm -hmm. leadership and tells them they've got to get fired up. He did. He went over and he talked to some of the guys. And basically what he said, Bruce, was just, guys, if you can get some stops, we'll score every time we have the football, if you can stop them. And uh, he wasn't lying. He was telling the truth, Bruce. The last six times we had the football in this game, we scored 40 points uh, in about 20 minutes at the end of this game. And that conversation between Taylor and the defense, uh, whatever clicked there between the guys, they rallied. The defense came up off the map, Bruce, and in the fourth quarter, stopped New Hampshire on three out of four drives, only allowed one touchdown. And that's the type of connection we have right now on our team. Our kids believe in each other. Uh, the, the kids could have turned on each other there, Bruce, particularly the offensive kids on the defense, but they believed in each other. They rallied and they keep that mentality. We keep stressing of just play the next play, have a positive mental attitude. It's going to work out. Right now, our kids feel like they can win any game at any time. Coach, how much credit goes to the offensive line? I mean, mm. it didn't look as if they got a break at any point no. in the game. I mean, they had to have been in there for, what, over 100 plays? They were, Bruce. It's a good point you bring up. I've, I've never been around anything like what they did. They were on the field for 112 snaps in this game. It was, it was close to, if not over 100 degrees with the heat index on the field. And, and Brian Scott, our offensive line coach, felt like we had to stay with that same five because, as I mentioned, we were chasing points the whole game. And what a credit to those kids led by Josh Mann, our center from Ocean Lakes, all the big guys. They hung in there. They only allowed one sack in this game, Bruce, and that was a coverage sack because Taylor couldn't find anything down the field. Incredible job by those kids. And no interceptions. Now, right. Taylor is a pretty low-key guy, but I think the happiest person at Ballard Stadium <laughs> Saturday was your quarterback's coach, Ron Whitcomb. <laughs> he was. It, it, it was a really special moment for me to witness. When I got done doing my press, press conference and came back in the locker room, Ron Whitcomb had the stats and was showing Taylor and was explaining to Taylor you're now, in 143 years of college football, the single game record holder for most passing yards at Division I. And, and to be able to witness those two sharing the, that moment for how hard they work together, Bruce, each week preparing and, and how they've grown together, that was special for me to see. You're right, Ron Wickham was a happy man. <laughs> All right, we've got to talk about your defense. You were not happy with the way they played last season. You made mm -hmm. 
coaching changes, you play your first conference game, give up 61 points. Mm -hmm. Is this a concern heading to Richmond tomorrow? Oh, it, it definitely is a concern, Bruce, if, if we're the team that we were in the first three quarters of the New Hampshire game. If we're the team we were in the fourth quarter, I don't have any concerns. But the problem early in this game, Bruce, so many mental areas, errors. We had over 50 mental errors in this game. Normally you'll have about 20 in a game. You know, things are going to happen. You're going to see something new and kids are going to make a mistake, but to have over 50 was unacceptable. And then we missed uh, 25 tackles. Normally we've been missing about seven a game. That's what you miss on average. So that was in the, in the first three quarters and then we cleaned it up. So I am concerned with those first three quarters. Coach D will get him in shape. Taylor wasn't mm -hmm. the only one to set records on Saturday. His receivers were outstanding and Chris Reckley visits with one of the best and smartest Nick Mayers. Lost in the amazing performance Saturday by Taylor Heineke was another record-setting performance by another monarch. Receiver Nick Mayers tied a school record with 12 catches and three touchdowns against New Hampshire. It just means we're just getting better. Week by week, we're getting better. You know, offensively, you know, we come out here with a mindset to get better no matter what the score is, how many points we put up, we feel like we can always play better the next week. A record-setting performance by Mayers, but far from perfect. It was bad at first, but then I just felt like I had to do what I had to do to help my team win. I felt like it was, I could definitely, I had one drop, so I didn't play as best as I could, so. As the accolades continue to come in for Heineke, Mayers has nothing but praise for his quarterback. Taylor is amazing. He's the best quarterback I've had by far, and the best I've seen, you know, the teams we played since I've been here, and I've been here a long time. Taylor, he just makes plays happen, and it's easy playing wide receiver for Taylor. The redshirt senior from Lansdowne High School in Virginia Beach led the Monarchs last season in receiving and was named All-CAA. He had one simple goal heading into his last season at ODU. Uh, to win, that's my goal. No matter what I do, I just want to help my team win. So no statistical goals, just to help my team win and be the best leader I can for the receiving core. In Norfolk, Chris Reckling for the Old Dominion Football Show. Thank you, Chris. Coach Nick Mayers has really mm -hmm. been a difference maker for you this year. He sure has. One of those special guys, Bruce, who was the in the first signing class back in 2008 from Lansdowne. And what's most impressive to me about Nick is, is here he is just, just setting all those records he did. And he's talking about uh, the one that he dropped, the one he didn't catch. And unselfish on all our special teams. Uh, just a, a good team player, a good leader for that receiving core. And we're very fortunate to have him. And a really smart guy. Still sure to come. Is. Robbie Duncan has been rock solid on that offensive front line for the Monarchs, but his toughest test uh, is yet to come as he the one-minute drill. Guy. Plus, Coach Wilder nice answers you. questions from you fans of the coach's corner and gives us his priorities of the game for tomorrow's conference showdown against the University. Redshirt senior Robbie Duncan has been one of the anchors of the offensive line, but coach, we find out tonight <laughs> and a comedian. football's not his only special <laughs> talent. It's time for the one-minute drill. Robbie Duncan, uh, you're from the D.C. area. So first question, I guess, would be a favorite D.C. sports team. Redskins, of course. We, you know, it's it's a little, it's it's up and down, but I'm born and raised Redskins fan for sure. So thoughts on RG3 and what, what you've seen so far? I'm excited, <laughs> big time. Good to have a good quarterback for once. <laughs> if you weren't playing football, what would you be doing? I'd be at home. Uh, I'm actually really good with voices, so I'd be looking to be a voice actor or somewhere else. Really? Mm -hmm. um, can you can you give us some some different voices for us? Uh, yeah, Peter Griffin from Family Guy. Oh, this is more exciting than that time I got to ride the washing machine. <laughs> Hi, I'm Peter Griffin from Family Guy. Nice to see you. <laughs> okay, I want another one. Uh, Rocky from the Rocky movies. Yo, I did it! I did it! Hey, yo, Mick, I gotta fight Apollo, you know? It's pretty tough. Don't make me do it, Mick! Don't make me do it! All right, we need one more. Hello there, I'm Hank Hill, and I sell propane and propane accessories. Hank Hill, from King of the Hill. I sell propane and propane accessories. Hello, Christopher Walken here. Thank you for coming. Goodbye. <laughs> He'll be at the Holiday Inn on uh, Saturday night after that's the right. game. Still to come, <laughs> the coach's corner and the priorities of the game for tomorrow's contest up in Richmond. Coach, a sellout crowd tomorrow at Robin Stadium. What can you tell us about Richmond? Richmond right now, Bruce, has a, a new head coach in Danny Rocco. 
uh, who took over this year, came down from Liberty where he'd been very successful. They've won three straight games. They're 1-0 and in our league right now, just on the outside of the top 25. Much improved team. John Lobb, their quarterback, has been excellent so far. He throws the ball well. He runs the ball well. We're going to have to contain him off on, on their offense. Now, defensively, Bruce, they've got one of the best safeties in the country, Cooper Taylor, who's excellent. Athletic defensive line, they're good on special teams. I expect this will be a challenge, Bruce, and we're also hearing out of Richmond that they've had this game circled on their calendar. They think this is a statement game for them, so we're going to have to be ready to play. You're going to have to look at that every single week <laughs> now, right. Coach. It's time to turn it over to you fans. Time for the Coach's Corner. This week's question is from Alan in Virginia Beach, and he happens to be from Taylor Heineke's hometown in Georgia. He says people would be amazed at how many Gwinnett County records that Taylor broke and some Georgia State records. Right. For those of you who don't know the story of how ODU got this star instead of a bigger school, Coach, could you tell us a quick story on how his recruitment landed him in Norfolk? Talk about uh, stars aligning. But, Coach, before you answer that, here's Heineke talking about how he almost ended up playing for the Richmond Spiders. You know, I went on an unofficial visit up to Richmond um, my senior year, and I really liked it up there. You know, it, was, it was a great campus. You know, it was a good program up there. And, um, but they didn't offer me at that time, and um, it was late in the, my senior season, and um, I had no offers. Coach, pretty good scout there. Yeah, it's interesting, Bruce, how that how that worked out. We were playing a game, and in, in, this was in 2010. We were up in New Jersey playing at Monmouth, and our, our vice president, Alonzo Brandon, uh, was getting ready to board a flight from New Jersey back to Old Dominion and happened to run into Taylor's personal trainer. And he noticed Alonzo had an Old Dominion hat on, and they started talking, and then they traded business cards, and the gentleman sent uh, Taylor's video to us at Old Dominion. So Alonzo had given me a heads up. I got the video, handed it to Ron Wickham, our quarterback coach. And Ron came into my office after watching and said, Coach, this is exactly the style of quarterback we're looking for. And uh, you mentioned the Gwinnett records. Well, he threw for 4,400 yards his senior year. He had an incredible senior year. So that's how it, that's how it happened. And we're very fortunate he ended up at Old Dominion. All right, Coach, real quick, the priorities of the game coming up against Richmond. Well, number one priority is, is we got to be able to handle being the hunted. That started last week, Bruce, with New Hampshire. Going to be the same at Richmond. They're excited for us to come in. We're excited to play them. This should be a great atmosphere. Second thing we need to do is be better assignment and tackling on defense. For three quarters Saturday, that was as bad as it gets. The fourth quarter was outstanding. We've got to get back to that at the start of this game. And then number three, we've got to keep our pace on offense. We were able to run 112 snaps Saturday. That made a difference in the fourth quarter. So we need to do the same same thing at Richmond. Those are the priorities for this week's game. All right, tomorrow, fourth ranked Old Dominion, on the road at the University of Richmond. The game is sold out. Kickoff at 3.30. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Join Bruce. us next Friday night at 10.45 for the Old Dominion Football Show.